Okay, we are here for another segment of Unfuck Your Body, and we are going to be talking about the hip. We are waiting for Resilient Spine, my girl Arnika, to log in here. We are going to do this in a two-part series, okay? So there is a lot going on with the hip. The hip has a lot going on with it, right? It can do a lot to impact your lower back. There are ton of muscular, tons of ton of musculature surrounding the hip and so we're going to break it up into a two-part series we're going to talk this week about how you can affect change in your hip if you are tight in your hip and then next week we're going to talk about how you can affect change in your hip if you are hypermobile or you are have too much flexibility in your hips okay so we are waiting for arnika to come on here All right. Hello, everybody. Yes, my girl. All right. So I got to tell you, I was all set up outside because I have a nice, beautiful rig outside. The sun is shining. And I was like, oh, let's do this outside. And I had it all set up. And then the wind blew and the shit just fell off. <laughs> I just briefed everybody, told them that we're going to do a two-part series for the hip because the hip is just really, really complicated. There's a lot going on. I mean, it it can be not complicated, but it's a little complicated. Right. So this week, we are specifically tackling if you are tight in your hips, like legit, you did the special test, you did the range of motion testing, you do not have good end range flexibility, Right. We could talk about mobility on both weeks, right? But this week, we're going to talk about if you do not have that flexibility and that a capacity and that capability to get to end range where you should be in your hips, how is that fucked? How does that fuck you up? How to unfuck that up and how to not fuck that up again? Next week, we will tackle hypermobility, which is, whew, to me, I think just so much more dangerous, right? Yeah. So this week, we're talking about if you do have tight hips. So, Obviously, first and foremost, what I like to address is assessment, right? How do we know if our hips are, in fact, limited in range of motion? What do we got to do? Uh, like the assessment that you put up, one of my favorite ones is that uh, supine hip flexion. Can you lay on your back and lift your legs up? Some people will realize that they can only get about 45 degrees because that hamstring just stops them in their tracks. So right. can you control and lift your leg up? Yeah, can yeah. And can you control it? That's a whole other ball game. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, can you get your knee all the way up into your chest, right? And so if you go to my Instagram pro profile, today's post, I put three um, range of motion screens that you can do to assess what's going on in your hips. Um, one of them being supine hip flexion. So can you lay down on your back and pull your knee to your chest? In doing so, what happens to the other leg, right? Because you might be getting end range, but is it at the expense of the other leg going somewhere where it's not supposed to be, right? And is there a discrepancy from left to right? Because what happens if one hip is super capable of getting into end range, but the other one is not? Also, one of my favorite things is which, where does that knee go when you pull it to your chest? Are you able to bring it straight up? Are you like, yeah, I can bring it out and you're bringing it all the way around to bring your hip out? Yep. Where is that hip sitting in that socket? It yes. plays a huge role. Yeah, a huge role, especially if you're going to then squat, right? Because that's what right. we're trying to assess, right? Is where does your body naturally want to sit? Because everybody has a different hip socket, right? Like we're, exactly. you know, we're all generally the same, but everybody's different, right? And so your hip might sit in a different spot from somebody else. So don't try to squat or lunge or step up like they're lunging or stepping up or squatting, right? You want to do it for you. And if you don't assess where your body wants to be, you're not going to know where you're supposed to put your feet, your hips, your body in a squatting position. And it could also be different left to right, right? Your right, right. hip might sit a certain way and your left hip might sit a different way. You need to acknowledge and, and realize and assess where each leg wants to go right and so if we do have too much range of motion on one side and not enough range of motion on the other side that's a huge imbalance and that's going to lead to problems so figure that out first and foremost like you guys got to realize that with these lives we're 
pumping out a bunch of information for you. This is just the ground level. We yes. need you to take this information and do something with it. Google the things, test your body out, ask the questions, contact us. Don't just gobble up all this information and then not implement anything, right? This is meant to start getting those juices flowing for you to start addressing the things that need to go, uh, you need to address within your body, right? Or somebody that you know, be like, hey, you were complaining about hip stuff, send it to them, but this is a starting point, people, okay? Starting point. Yes, okay, yes. so assessment. Um, we've, we've assessed, do we need to assess the hip alone? No, we need to assess <laughs> above and below. No, not the hip alone. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> One of the favorite things to look at is ankle. So what is it, two weeks ago, we talked about ankle and how from that foundation, it goes up. So if we're having um, lack of ankle mobility and we can't get our knees over our toes or what that may be, we start compensating and our hip picks up all the slack. Right, the, it's gonna land somewhere. Right? right. And so just because you have pain in your hip doesn't necessarily mean your hip is fucked up. Right. Could be the ankle and vice versa. You know how many people I deal with Achilles problems? And I'm like, do you know how weak your hip is? Right. Yeah. Like the hip is not taking a lot of the load. And so then their ankle is taking it. Right. So, I mean, we're going to keep hammering away at this. It is never just one spot. Unless you got hit by a car, or you got hit by a baseball bat, there was traumatic injury. It's usually something that has developed over time and it's not, pain is not the indicator of where the problem is. Pain is no. just the symptom and it lands somewhere, but that is not the cause or the root cause of the problem, right? Always gotta look up and down and around and left and right and up and down. Okay, so ankle and hips, so, so, so closely related, very closely related. Um, so what's another problem that could fuck you up, right? Like, so what happens if I don't know how to bend over properly? Yes, that fucks <clears throat> up. And that's what most people come with their low back thinking that that's the issue or reality is that they don't know how to disassociate or use their hips and hinge. So they bend or they lift with their back and cause all that compression and tension. Correct. Yeah. And then that also is one thing that I've seen a lot in clients is the left to right, the ability to engage the hip and bending over, right? So if you've never tested your ability to do a single leg deadlift or single leg RDL, then you don't know whether one hip is really capable of getting that hip engaged when you're hinging and not using your lower back. It is a huge difference left to right. Everybody is gonna have this instability and this unawareness, this lack of motor control within yes. one of those hips, right? And so if you don't test out that single leg capability, you're really leaving a lot on the table as far as like developing your ability to properly hinge and engage the right musculature in hinging patterns, right? So left to right is huge for me on testing that out. Yes, and I wanna talk about lack of motor control, which a good chunk of people do have of why they, if you're standing up and you can't touch your toes, but if you lay up, you sit down on the floor, you can reach and touch your toes with no problem. Sometimes you just don't have that motor control yep. from that brain, that mind muscle connection in order to feel safe in that position. And that's a totally different ball yep. game that we can tackle. Yeah, yeah, I mean that, or yeah, that feeling safe. That's, that's what I was gonna say, is the confidence and telling your body that it is in fact okay to do this. So many times you see people squat down or lunge down to pick something up because they're like, well, I don't wanna hurt my back. And I'm like, well, you're fucking up your back by not even attempting it, right? So right. you want to, yes, allow the body to realize that it is in fact safe to get into these positions. Now, do you just throw yourself into those positions? No. Absolutely not, right? Like you gotta, you gotta be gentle with the body, but so much to getting into end range positions or getting into proper positions is just telling the body that it is in fact safe to do so. And that's a huge, huge, huge thing to overcome. It's huge in training. Very, very, should be top, like first thing you do. <laughs> right, <laughs> so, yeah. so true. Yeah, um, and, so, and then sitting, right? Like, is it fucked up? It's probably fucked up if you've been sitting all day long, right? Right, I mean, right. Especially those, we have those couple of people you sit, you know, in that butterfly stance or that one leg over. And it's always commonly that one side. And yeah. we wonder why we don't have or lack. Actually, sometimes we have hypermobility in one direction. Yes. Like external rotation as opposed to the other side. And that causes more problems. Yes. 
Yes, no, I have that in one of my things to cover is the your but your joint has a limited amount of range, right? Like your shoulder, external rotation and internal rotation. It only has about 180 degrees of rotation. If you have excessive rotation in one direction, you are going to be lacking in the other direction, right? And so I was a softball player, volleyball player. I could externally rotate all day long. I cannot do this, right? <laughs> Probably something I should work on. Same with the hip. Everybody focuses on external rotation, external rotation, external rotation. We need that internal rotation as well. And if you do, on here I have it, the 90-90 drill. If you don't know what it is, you need to Google it. I have it on my YouTube train, YouTube page, Thai Training. The 90-90 drill will immediately let you know where you are lacking internal external rotation and left to right. But um, but yeah, that that or just that's my favorite just, movement. That's it's my favorite so movement. Everyone starts there because we can so build upon that with hip hinges and mm -hmm. adding on and dynamic movement. So everyone has to be able to sit in that position. And if they can't get there, they're right. just being able to sit and breathe into it. Eventually, those joints will loosen up. So we right. got to start there as a basis. Is my yep. idea. Yeah, that's yeah. that's an easy test to just give yourself. Is it fucked up? All right. Well, can I sit in a ninety ninety? And how different is it from left to right? And there's ways to regress it. You can sit on something like just. This is the starting point. Yoga blocks, if you yep. can't do it, right? If it's just completely un, you can't accomplish the task, reach out. We have regressions. We have progressions. There are ways to adjust absolutely everything that you need to do in order to test whether your body is indeed fucked up and to then really make sure that you do not fuck it up again and that you can fix right. it, right? right. Um, so as far as like the sitting and everything, everybody, I've had so many clients throughout this pandemic complain to me about aches and pains and lower back issues and hip issues that they just haven't had before. And the biggest thing that I keep saying is you gotta get up, right? Yes. Like, you're gonna get fucked up from the sitting. Like if that's just, we are not meant to sit in chairs. We're not meant to sit on toilets. We're not meant to sit at the kitchen table. We are meant to squat or stand. That is what we are meant to right, do. Right, right. When I tell people, they're like, um, I, um, you know, you get the typical sitting at a desk 90, 90. I'm like, it's not always about that. You have to get up and move right. still. It's not about sitting in this perfect position. We weren't made to sit down. And along the way, these tools came like chairs and soft couches. And now all of a sudden, we're no longer being able to sit in squats, which is what right. we used to do all the time. And right. that's how we help get those hip mobility because eventually our hip starts going to that one specific range. And it doesn't even know that it's a lot more degrees of motion. Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. And once you lose it, it's real hard to get it back, right? And that's right. something that we have evolved to, right? Like it's like, you know, like there are certain cultures that just do not access that position and we have lost the ability to get there right and so that's something right. that we need to really pull back the curtain on all right so still with assessment are we fucked up we need to realize is it tight or weak that is right. huge that sensation of being tight is often really 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 misinterpreted just because it feels tight does not necessarily mean that it is tight that is why assessment is so huge it could just be weak right yes and the biggest stretch. ones are the hip flexors those yes. people who are doing that stretch on the couch stretch against the wall stretch a thousand times a day and realize right. why they can't stretch this muscle out it's weak right. right it's not all about being tight stretching is not always the answer sometimes right. you have to not only be aware of that muscle but engage it and actually strengthen it absolutely yeah and we'll cover that a lot next week because hypermobility is whoo Ooh, I really want to talk to those women, especially <laughs> there's lots of men, but women, especially sometimes they just sit in this deep squad and they're opening everything up and they're going to yoga classes and they're wondering why everything still feels tight. And I'm like, well, you're just doing more damage. Like it's not stretching is not indicated for everybody. Sometimes it is very contraindicated. So we will address right. that next week. Okay. Last thing that I want to talk about with the, is it fucked up? Okay. Is assessing squat versus deadlift versus single leg strength. Three huge things that you need to figure out in order to figure out what's going on with the strength of the musculature in your hips, right? Like if you are a squat dominant athlete and you aren't very good at hinging, you need to get better at hinging, right? There should be a certain percentage that you should be sitting at deadlift versus squatting strength, right? And vice versa, me, I love me some RDLs. I am a long limbed athlete, I would rather deadlift and squat any day of the week. You'll see it on my Olympic lifting. I bend over and I pick up the barbell. It's a very comfortable, strong position for me. I'm not squat dominant. My training partner is. 
She is all quads. She could sit in that third world spot all day long and she will squat till the cows come home, but she does not hinge. We have very different problems, but we need to address that and correct that imbalance. Same with single leg strength. What's going to happen if one leg is 30% stronger than the other? Right? Exactly. Like, yeah. It's gonna gonna have us exactly. Exactly. I'm just now transitioning because I used to be with past sports squat dominant. We didn't do a lot of single leg shit. Yeah. And now, which going on focus, which ties <laughs> program, which is fucking awesome. I'm doing single leg things and I'm like, I like this. I feel yeah. stronger and I'm starting to feel different muscles engaging. We don't do a lot of that. We did a lot of squatting and that was it. Right. Yeah, which is hugely important. But if you squat to the cows come home and one leg is working 30% harder than the other leg because it's just stronger and it's willing to take that load, then that strong leg is going to start getting pissed off. And it's going to be like, why am I pulling all this weight? Why am I doing right. all this work? And then you're going to be like, but my right side is my strong side. I don't understand why my right hip hurts. And I'm like, well, your right hip is pissed. Right. Because the left hip is out to lunch while it's doing right. Work, Not right? doing so, shit. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> so we really need to figure out that single leg strength. And one of the easiest, easiest ways to then get better at single leg strength, and I do this in my focus program, is I just relay, hey, if you feel a really big significant difference from right to left, dose an extra set on that right side every time you do single leg work. Easiest way to fix it. You don't have to overthink it. You don't have to specifically program for it. Let's just start building up that weaker side to then get it to match the strong side. Easiest way to dose that in. Okay, so how to unfuck it up. That was the first tip. tip. <laughs> <laughs> How to unfuck it up. So we're talking about tight, tight hips specifically. What do we need to do in order to unfuck up the hip? We need to open those hips up. So get up and move. Like one of my favorite ones, let's see if you guys can show, is being able to sit in this half inning position and going around the world and open up hips. It's one of my favorite movements to help with both hips. So getting used to being out of that sitting position and realizing that our hip is a ball and socket joint and can move. Yes. Yeah, and it's got many planes of movement, right? Like it doesn't right. just go forward and back or side to side. It goes all the directions, right? The hip and the shoulder are the same joint. So if you are lacking in any of those, you need to get into them. So what's one of the best ways to get end range mobility, right? Like, I mean, Ooh. the cars maybe? Yeah, I love the cars. I love the cars. Like, so... You know, I personally been doing cars myself. As you know, my left hip has been fucked up. But hip cars are my favorite thing to do, which are different because some people think it's just throwing your hip around in a circle and we get like this arching back motion, which is us again, not disassociating our low back from our hip. Right. So it's all about intentional movement. So being able to go into that full range, slow and controlled, and bringing our hip around without our back dipping in is how we know that we have that full range of motion on that side. And notice that I showed you with my right hip, which is right now my good hip and not my bad hip. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. We got to show, we got we to gotta glorify. It's for Instagram versus reality. Exactly. But, exactly. But yeah, it's a con controlled articular rotation, right? It's not, woohoo, how far can we get this thing, right? And that's so much to do with how to unfuck your body, right? Where can you control your movement, right? Like, and if you cannot get into this big range of motion with the cars or with your end range mobility, then that is something that you need to work on, right? Like, let's start small with the intention of getting more range, right? But it doesn't happen overnight. You have got to approach these things over and over and over and over again, right? Like, I am 41 years old. My body is used to moving a certain way for a very long time. And if I don't specifically keep Keep approaching these positions and these ranges it's going to default to what it's very used to right so so yeah mobilizing the hip and then controlling that end range right there's no point if you have end range flexibility if you don't have then control another one of my favorite things to do is rotational step ups right we always do very forward facing step ups but can you pick your foot up Put it on the box and then pull yourself up. That's another really good way to develop strength in that rotation and in that just that. I like that. Oh, yeah. The range of the yeah. hip. Yeah, it's, just, it's a really, really good one. Okay. So another good way. So mobilizing the hip, right? Is it just stretching and rolling, stretching and rolling? No. Like, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> With the eye roll. Right. No. If someone says, you know, I put that, you know, I rolled my hamstring out. I'm like, that's, that's a lot more to it. That's not going to work. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, stretching, stretching is it's kind of bottom of the barrel as far as like increasing range, especially within a joint, right? Like, we need to access the positions that we want to then be in, right? So one of my favorite ways to open up the hips for a squat is, I don't know, sit in a squat, right? Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me, right? So can you drop down to the bottom of the squat, even if you need to hold on to something or if you need a counterbalance or just, but get into that end range position. Feel, move your feet, move your knees. Where does your body need to be, right? In order to really access that position. And then try to remember that when you are then loaded up and trying to get into that squat, right? Like it's just really, really important for you to feel where your body needs to be. And then if you are lacking the capacity, the capability to get to the bottom of the squat, I'm sorry, but you gotta sit there more often. Right, right, like, right. You have exactly. To keep doing it, right? I mean, 60 seconds, two minutes, three minutes at a time. Like, you want to be able to sit at the bottom of a squat for 10 minutes. That's the gold standard. Look at Ready State, right? Kelly Starrett, man. Sit at the bottom of the squat for 10 minutes. Can you do that, right? Like, that is what we're meant to do. And if you cannot, that's something that you got to put high up on your list of things to do. Yes, definitely. One of my favorite things, not only is just sitting in that position, because at times throughout the day, I just sit in a deep squat. Yes. And also being able to be in that squatted position translated forward. And can you actually get an almost like a squat position on all fours in the quadrant position? Yep. If you can't have that flexibility in your hip in order to get back in that position on the ground without gravity, without load, there's no reason why we should be throwing weight overhead. And we're Correct. wondering why our low back is hurting. So right. can you get into it in certain positions without loading in first? Yeah. Yeah, no, I have that one on my YouTube page too. It's one of like the most viewed uh, videos of mine is just the frog stretch because it is yeah. just a really good way to access that position in a very safe way, right? You're not loading your body whatsoever. And if it is incredibly uncomfortable, then you have no business doing full heavy cleans or crashing into these positions without having that mobility, that end range mobility and control. Okay, exactly. so um, unplucking it up, mobilizing. Okay, strengthening. How, I mean, how many muscles do we have attached to the pelvis? Oh my gosh, <laughs> too many to fucking count. All right. Which means that we need to do more work in that area. Yes. And that's why the hip is so complicated because it can be pulling from so many different directions. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, like we we, especially CrossFitters, that's generally who I tend to speak to, we turn to work in very forward, positions not a lot of uh, lateral and right. um i'm sorry but there are a lot more muscles attached to your hip that move laterally so if you are not introducing cossack squats or side lunges or lateral movement to your programming you are leaving a whole lot on the table and the possibility for injury is really high for you so throw them in there we want to strengthen all around the hip right from the inside to the outside right it's a ball and socket joint it moves in all planes of motion so we need to strengthen in all planes of motion with control okay um yes so hip flexors adductors abductors hammies everything right all around um 90 90 hugely important and then how do we unfuck up uh, fuck it up we really address the imbalance from left to right and that is stability and strength right like so you might right. be able to stand on your left leg really easily because it might be your planting foot right so that's a lot of times whatever dominant arm you are usually the opposite leg is your more stable leg but it doesn't necessarily mean it's the stronger leg right so you right. have to assess all of that right i mean it's you just have to do it all important. Right. Yeah, Especially you mentioned the adductors and the abductors. Um, most people are sitting there rolling out or trying to roll out their, you know, their IT band. But at times we just need to strengthen it. Especially right. our adductors. I'm working with a client now that we're doing a lot of lateral stuff. She grew up playing soccer her whole life. Everything was this way. Everything mm -hmm. was this way. And t kept having groin pulls. So we right. have to be able to strengthen those adductors as well as mobilize them. Yeah, no, it's one of the hugest things like it's and the groin pull sucks because it just happens over and over again. And so, I mean, adductor strength should be a prerequisite for every single soccer player because they just they don't tend to throw it into enough of their strength and conditioning. But then when they're out on the pitch, they're required of many different planes of movement. And then you're like, well, there goes your adductor. Well, we should have right. strengthened that. Darn it. Same with ankles, right? Like so much yes. movement, we need to test that off with the ankles as well. All right, so how do we not fuck it up again, right? We gave you guys a lot to go off of. Please, 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 if you have any questions, shoot them over, right? How do you, is it fucked up? You got to test it. 
How do you unfuck it up? There's a lot to that. So if you have specific questions, please, please, please contact us. Both of us are down to review videos. If you want to do yes. those, you want to do those movement screens that I put up on my profile, please do them and send us the video. We can give you feedback. All right. So don't just watch this and be like, oh, that was entertaining. I know we're cute, but you yes. need to do the homework. You need to Google the things and you need to reach out. Okay. So how do we not fuck it up again? Say we're tight in our hips. We're starting to work on all this stuff, but then we get into the gym. What do we need to be mindful of? I know for me personally and other people, we like to start with hip mobility. So I like to start with hip openers or some type of movement to warm my hip up. Not just sitting in that, you know, couch stretch or that Bulgarian squat, but being able to open my hip up before I start moving it. Yeah. No, I mean, we're all the Tin Man, right? We got to lubricate those joints up right get them uh accessing these range it ranges in a very very safe manner start telling your body hey we're okay we can get here we can do this start relaying that to your nervous system so it doesn't just ah, bite back at you when you then do sit in that couch stretch stretch or you start doing those back squats right take the time to do the stuff to prime your body and get it ready warm-up is huge dude that's why it's in the beginning it's huge you need to be mindful of it and you need to be intentful with it right like is that yeah, even a word intention. intentional yeah. I intentional. like it. Intentional, <laughs> intentional. <laughs> intentional movement is the key. Yes. You have to be intentional with your movement. That's how we stop yes. injuries. Yes. And be intentional with all your movement. Why am I doing this? Where do I need to be? How can I connect with the part of the body that I'm trying to use? All right. So being mindful, mobilizing pre-workout. And that does not just mean stretching and rolling, right? Mobilizing means sitting in the bottom of a squat for 20 seconds and activating that position, right? Challenging your depth little by little, right? Like, so say you sit in a 20 second isometric squat and you're at parallel, get up, walk around, do a little dynamic stretches, do another set sitting at the bottom of the squat for 20 seconds, a little bit deeper, get up, walk around, but be intentional with where you're going and can you hold your positions? Don't get into a position that you cannot control. And that's a really, really big thing for not fucking up your hip again when you are working on it. Don't just go deeper in squats for the sake of getting deeper. If you have a coach that is like, go deeper, go deeper, go deeper, but has not assessed your movement and figured out whether you can in fact get, get deeper there. safely, you need to either leave that coach or you need to do the work on your own in order to realize whether you can in fact access these positions, right? There's no point in getting in them if you can't control them, okay? Yes, that goes a lot to hip pinches when people are doing squats and they're either feeling themselves sway to one side or keep hipping, uh, getting that pinch in their hip. Don't keep going to that position. We need to stop before that. You're not right now, that hip is not ready or feeling safe to right. get there. So we have to yes. work up to it. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the hip pinch is huge too, because it could just be a positional thing. Assess your body. If your hip pinches with your knee pulling directly in, but it doesn't pinch out there, girl, that's your spot. Right. That's your spot position. That, right? That's your spot. Exactly. Yes. It's as simple as that. And we get that from the assessment. You got to start at the foundation. You got to start at the top, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So make sure that you stay within a range. And that means if you need to limit the range of motion on your squats by doing box squats or maybe front squats feel a lot better for you than back squats, then build your st strength in front squats and slowly introduce back squats through a smaller range until you have that same control. One of the first things that I stop people from doing is squatting to depth if I see that they don't have the lower ab or the bracing control in order to control the hip at the bottom of the squat, right? Like if you fall, to, fall, fall apart at the bottom of your squat, you should not be going there under load. Do I think everybody can eventually get to the bottom of the squat? Absolutely. I'm not saying don't squat to depth. I'm saying squat to the depth that you are capable of going to with control that is how you are going to minimize that risk of injury and then allow your body to heal going forward if you are then addressing the problems that are going on with your hip exactly okay um and then how to not fuck it up again let's just constantly constantly strengthen all the surrounding musculature right yes i mean but that's something that. you can't slip on right yes yeah. There's some of these things that you're just gonna have to do for the rest of your life, right? And if you wanna challenge your body with cleans, with squats, with sprinting, if you wanna go play, be that weekend warrior, you're gonna have to do the things, right? 
And right. while you're in rehab mode, you might not have, you, you might have to do them more often, right? Four or five, you notice in focus program, we are addressing these things all the time, right? right? But as you get better and it feels better, you can tailor off a little bit. Like you can be like, all right, twice a week, I'm going to sit at the bottom of the squat in order to maintain my end range mobility and everything. Great, right? But it's got to right. still be in there, right? <laughs> gotta exactly. There. All right. And so what's the, what's one of the biggest things that we can do in order for to not have our daily activities impact or lack of activity impact what's going on in our hip. One of the biggest things that we can do all day long is just take a break from working and get up and move, get up and move. Get up and move. The thing you around. mentioned on your story a couple weeks ago, and I told my clients this, that if you're working from a laptop and instead of charging your computer, keep that shit unplugged. My mind was blown. I was like, everyone needs to do this. <laughs> Don't keep your computer charged in. The shit's going to die in a couple hours. Right. That means once it starts blinking that you need to get your ass up and move. You've been sitting in that same position for right. too long. Yes. I loved it. I tell everyone I, that now. I know. I was very happy with myself for that one because it legit <laughs> happened to me. And I took it as a sign. I was working at my kitchen table. That's not where my usual spot is. I didn't have any of my chargers, but it was sunnier there. So I was like, all right, let me go work over there. And the second it started going low battery, I was like, well, I guess I'm due for a walk around the block. And I was like, that is a great little hack. Yes. I love it. Charge your computer, take it to a workstation, work for as long as your computer has battery, and then shut that shit and go walk around the block or do some squats or do just do some dynamic stretching, get up and move. But yes, walking. Let's not neglect how much walking can impact your body, right? Like you can get up and walk and it can be hugely impactful on your body, your hip, your mood, everything, right? But let's not just walk around, you know, like all schlumpy. Let's walk with intention. Let's work on our posture. Mm -hmm. yeah. It can have such huge carryover. I mean, it's, it's walking. We're meant to walk for very, very, very long, long distances, right? Right. right. We are nomadic physically as well as mentally. It helps yeah. mental yes. as well. It's Going so from cute, that, you know, right? yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And, and don't neglect the, 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 impact of an unplugged walk, right? You don't have to be on podcasts. You don't have to be a scrolling Instagram. You don't have to be drafting email. You can take 10 minutes, get up, stand tall and walk around the block without anything disrupting you, right? Like some, take some time for yourself, focus on your breathing, hugely important. Okay, Arnika, so next week we are, oh no, hey. What? The hip has a huge Perfect. impact on what? Your low back? Yes, yes. <laughs> your hip has a huge impact on your low back. Yes, you, sorry, you want me to put my plug in? Is this my yeah. shameless plug time? Yeah, yeah so, let's so talk about it. I just started um, a low back resilience program. Um, it's already started, but I'll let you guys know when it opens back up. But it's a seven-week program to help you get stronger in your low back, help build some strength, and a lot of hip mobility is in there as well. So make sure you tap in on my Instagram and a link in the bio and get on the wait list to join that the next round. Yes, wonderful, wonderful. Everybody at some point will have some issues with their lower back. And if yes. you can just be more educated on how to deal with it, you will feel so empowered and it will just eliminate so much more stress, right? Like you'll get over it faster, you'll feel better. Like it's just so much more, so much better for you, for you just be empowered and educated. Um, so we did have somebody say, you know, like unless you're a teacher and you're sitting at your desk for a long time and you don't have the ability to get up and move around, my advice for somebody in that situation that it has to be changed to change to their desk desk for four or five, six hours is to do it before and after, right? Prep yourself before by doing some mobility exercises, doing some activation drills, sitting at the bottom of the school. Isometric squats are huge. Do that. And then as soon as you're done, that's your time to do it all over again. Okay. That will minimize the impact of it for such a long term, right? Um, also, so um, that's a great thing too. And also, um, there's a lot of things that you can do from your chair. I know, yes. um, for instance, I have a work from home, um, a work from home mobility book, which has five exercises that you can do from your chair, all movement. Awesome. Things about getting that upper back moving so you can help release some tension in that low back, get your neck moving, and even some hip stuff. So there are some things that you awesome. can still do from your chair, even though you are chained to that desk, as well as getting it in before and after. Awesome. Yeah. So if you need to set a little timer, go ahead and do that and then pick a pick a stretch to do every, you know, like hour or so. That's awesome. Really, really good stuff. All right, guys. So next week we are going to be going over hypermobility in the hip and how to, you know, assess for that and how to 
really not get yourself unfucked object. up. Yes, because you right. must stabilize, 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 and I'm gonna tell you to not stretch. Um, exactly. So, yeah, right. So go ahead and be go. ready. Just be ready, because I'm gonna rip We're that not way stretching. Perfect. Yes. All right. So again, I cannot relay this enough. This is your introduction to how to unfuck up your body. If you ever have questions or you need more resources, please, please, please reach out. We are here yes. to evaluate your movement to go over these things, send us your movement screens, send us your squat patterns. We, we love want to videos. see it all. We love, love me some videos. We send videos every day. We love videos. It's, <laughs> yes, it's so easy to send over this information. Send it, reach out, and ask the questions, okay? We are here to help. Please, please, please send this to anybody that you think would need help. We are going over the hip again next week, and then we'll be moving on to the lower back. We'll cover that because there are still other things going on there. So we will see you next week. Thank you so much, Arnika. Thank you, Ty. See you next time. Bye, y'all.